And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, when should the kingdom of God come? He answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Which means you're not going to stand there and watch things happen. Watch. Oh, here we go. Thank you, Jesus. Neither shall they say, Lo, here or lo, there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Watch this. Little K, not big K. Little K, the kingdom is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. Oh, come on, sweet Jesus, come on. Neither shall they say, lo, here, lo, here. In other words, when's it going to come? Here, then, now, when was it going to come? Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. What you speak, what you say, what you do, what you think is the kingdom of God. Are you ready for this? Brother Dave said, Brother Dave said a good service will last about 35, 40 minutes. Brother Chad said I need to be done in 45 minutes. It ain't going to happen. Here we go, Father. Let's make this happen. My title today is simply, simply, The Word versus the World. Come on, Holy Ghost. I can't do this on my own. And I'm not about to try to do this on my own. You stop me whenever you want to stop me, and you do your thing. The world, or the word versus the world. Thank you, Father. You may be seated in Jesus' name. The kingdom starts inside of you. It's in you. You should be cultivating a different behavior. Work out your own salvation with fear and and, and trembling. You need to look at the pastor and the church for for a reflection of what God is. But but you need to work out your own salvation. The kingdom is within you. Little K, not big K. Praise God. The kingdom starts within you. Now there are three areas of life, and that is the lust of the flesh. This is, I'm talking about the world. The lust of the eyes and the pride of life. And from the pride of life, the world judges, or they are, they judge things on taste, smell, hearing, touch, and, and, and what's the fifth one? Seeing. Seeing. Thank you. If that's what the world judges us by. That's if they don't if they cannot feel it and see it and understand it, then it is of no value. But we are different than the world is today. We live by faith. We live by faith. No, we don't live by the lust of the flesh or the things we look at or the pride of life. We live by the things we cannot see, and that's the things that God's got in control, and that's the things that we are in the palm of his hands. Faith. We live, by, we, 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 we live with a different set of rules. We live by holiness. We live separate than what the world does. They don't believe what we believe, okay? We don't operate under the same laws as the world. Listen, religion means to conform to an order of conduct, rules, laws, or yokes. That's what religion is. We should be operating under the relationship to Him. So many times we want to please those around us when we forget that pleasing the one and only should go to him. We are different. Our God lives inside of us. We are the only faith that where the one that is being worshipped lives inside of the worshiper. It's coming. I'm going to unloose it. I'm going to unloose it. There should be something inside of us that makes us different. 
You can't change something if you're not a part, uh, you, if you're a part of it or like it. I said on Tuesday night, you are the salt of the world, which means if you are the salt of the world, you need to be changing things around you. We are living uh, uh, the reality of our words, our conversations in our everyday life, good and bad. The world attacks our conduct, our outside. Jesus attacks the condition of our heart, which should create a change in our behavior. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. This is all about you. You change our hearts. That's what you look at. You look upon the heart. Man looks upon the outward appearance. And that's okay because you're the one that's going to elevate us. How are you going to make a difference in the world if you, your thinking is like the world? How are you going to, uh, to affect people if you are of the world the same as? We should be making a difference in our surroundings. We need to infect our world, not let it affect us. You need to be the infection that gets into people. Don't let the world affect us. The word versus the world. Don't let your circumstances dictate who you are or your outcome. My, 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 my. My, 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 my. My, 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 my. My, my, my. Take me to Mark chapter 4, if you will, Sister Sabrina. Mark chapter 4, in the name of the Lord. Are you ready? Praise God. The sower soweth the word. The sower soweth the word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was made flesh. Our job is to be sowing the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard Satan cometh immediately. The moment you start sowing the word in your heart. There's a difference in sitting under my voice and listening to the preaching. You can listen to the preaching all day long. You can listen to messages and preachers all day long. But the question that I have for you today is, are you getting it into your heart? It's here. But it's got to go beyond here. Watch. It's got to get deep down in the soil. The heart is the soil. It's got to get in the soil. It's got to take root. It's got to move. It's got to be more than just a thinking process. It's got to go from here to here because here is where everything is born. Everything that comes out of the heart, out of the heart, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You think negative? It's because you say negative? It's because you think negative. You're not healed because you don't think healing. You got to get the word out and what's thus saith the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord says that I am healed. The word of the Lord says that you are a king. That you are a Lord. And that there is royalty running in your veins. But when they have heard the word... Satan immediately comes in and wants to snatch that word out of your out of your head. Well, I don't believe what the preacher said today because I believe what my daddy taught me and what my granddaddy taught me and what my great granddaddy taught me. You need to get out the word of the Lord and open your minds and say, "What does saith the word of God?" There is no harvest at the end of the year if you don't plant something. You got to do the planting. I am healed. I am a child of God. I am great in his name. I am his right hand. I am greatness through the Lord today. I can preach the word of God. 
I am positive. And who? And Satan taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on the stony ground. Who when they have heard the word, they received it. They heard it. They received it. And they heard the word immediately received it with gladness. And have no root in themselves. And so endure but for a time. You don't let the word. Oh sweet Jesus. You don't let the word drop down into your heart and let it take root and begin to grow the things of God. You would rather, we would rather play the news for seven hours than we would listen to the gospel music or listen to gospel preachers. They might not have the truth, but there's some words of nuggets that you can get out of, a, an, a, a, out of other, a, a, other preachers. And immediately the devil takes that word and will steal it out of you. Because he knows that if that word gets down from your head into your heart, he knows that you're going to come out and be a different person. He knows that there's a change on the horizon. He knows that there's something different about them. He might not know. Listen, listen, listen. He might not know the outcome of your life. He knows the outcome of your daddy's life. He knows the outcome of your grandpa's life. But he does not know the outcome of your life. But what he does is, is he looks down and he says, or steps aside and says, no, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't want them like Paul. I don't want them like Jesus. I don't want them like John. If I, if, if, if I let loose of my grip, then they could very well explode the world and infect what they have. Oh. So we'll sit back and we'll not give God praise and we'll not give him the glory and we'll sit back and we won't clap and we won't give God thanks that he deserves. We'll just sit back and we'll do our thing because that's what we're used to. So endure for a time afterward when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake. Oh, sweet God, help me. The word is in you. The only way to get the word in you is to submit yourselves under Jesus Christ and let him be a part of you. Oh, sweet Lord, help me, Jesus. I'm pumping 200 miles an hour here. I'm going to have a heart attack. I feel it exploding. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. The reason we have negatives in our life and we do not let the kingdom of God come forth in our lives because we have sown negatives in our heart and not the positive things that God wants us to have. In other words, it's easier to listen to a dirty joke than it is to go on and just listen to the word of God. It's easier for us to sit in front of a television than it is to let the music play in the background because it soothes our fleshly desires. <sighs> Praise God. Oh, watch this. Watch this. You wonder why you're unfruitful? It's because the things that you've allowed from here to here You've allowed them to take root in your heart. I have seed in my hands. The only way the seed is going to take, take effect and do its job is to be planted in the ground. That's the only way.
or where it's grown at. It will grow whatever whatever you put into it. Whatever you put into it is what is what will grow. Negative things. Things that my daddy did to me. Things my grandpa did to me. Things that my school teacher did to me. Things that my boss treated me when I should have had the promotion. I got gypped on, the, on, on, on my raise this year. I should have gotten more than I got. Be glad that we live in a country where we get the raises and we get the benefits. What you plant grows. You plant negative, negativity will grow. You plant corn, corn's going to grow. You plant cotton, cotton's going to grow. You plant uh, peas, peas are going to grow. The, 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 the soil doesn't care what you plant because it doesn't know the difference between good and bad. There's something in the soil that God has put in there that we cannot, we don't understand. Watch this, watch this. We plant it in the springtime when it's supposed to be planted. Then we let it grow and we watch it grow and we watch it rise up. This is your life. Listen, over a month, two months, six months, we don't see anything coming out of the uh, 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 of the plant until later on in life that plant is just maturing nurturing sucking up the soak the uh, you know, the nutrients from the ground enjoying the sunlight enjoying the rain the blessings of god 6 months 9 months however long it takes to plant i don't know doesn't matter but there's a time frame when your life years when your life is taking in and taking in and taking in and taking in. And it's up to you on whether you want good or bad. Okay, you can't do anything from yesterday's conversations. Yeah, you can. Repent and get it under the blood. Today you can say, you know what? You're going to a party. I'm not going with you. I disagree with your lifestyle and I cannot be a part of it. So you wonder why your life is unfruitful. Because you have planted things that will not grow in the kingdom of God. So now we are 90 years old and we think, okay, God, what do you got for us? I can say it because there ain't nobody 90 in here. What do you got for us? Well, you're not too old to bring in positives into the kingdom of God. There is a work for all of us until we are dead. There's a ministry for all of us. There's a ministry for all of us. It's my job and First Lady's job and second family's job to make sure you fit in that area Amen. that is comfortable for your planting and your development of your Christian life. It ain't about me. The better off you look, the better I am. The better, the more mature you are, the less I have to do. And that's the way a king should be. Let's go, Sister Sabrina. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit. I'm going to hide my talents. I'm going to go make five talents into ten talents. I'm going to go make three talents into six talents. But I'm going to go hide my one talent. You know why it's possible that he hid his talent? And that is possibly because the talent that he had 
might have been a negative fruit in his life. And it was easier for him to hide it than it was to get it under the blood. Let's read on. Do I have another scripture up there or no? Was that it, Sister Sabrina? I don't know. I'm out, I'm out of my notes. All right. Life and death are in the power of your tongue. We need to read the word. Say it over. Meditation. Say it over and over again. We need to remind yourself day after day what the word says. We need to humble ourselves continually. I want to, we want to blame the devil on things that are not of him. You took the seeds of life that you heard and planted them in your soil, your heart. You took the seeds and did the planting. The devil didn't. Matthew chapter 12 says that your words are justified or you're condemned by them. Seeds determine your growth your complaining words complaining results your negativity negative attitudes speaking against your life wanting to commit suicide finances in your life it's only a situation it's all it is it's not God's fault that you live above your means in other words, the lust of the eyes. I need to have more because Johnny Jones has more. Stay within your means for right now. Well, God knows my heart. Yes, he does. He knows your heart. But your soul... Your heart doesn't know the difference of what you plant in it. Your soul does not discriminate what you put in the heart. It just grows what you put into it. The ground. John chapter... 1, verses 1 through 4, Sabrina. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. In the beginning was the Word. God was the Word. He was it. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. Watch, watch. In the beginning, God called you out before the foundations of the world. He knew you. And the word is in you. You are either of the word, Jesus Christ, or of the world. One or the other. Let's read on. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Chapter 17, Sister Sabrina. Here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> Brother Dave, thank you. We are the representation of the kingdom. Where you go, what you do, what you say, what you think. Your bills, your house, your car is a representation. All right, I'm going to preach now. How much time do I have, Brother Chad? Am I past my time? Okay. I know I'm good. I'm just looking for the time here. No, I'm just kidding. God is good. God is good, isn't he? All the time, he is, he is good. I'm only standing to you today, in front of you today, by the grace and mercy of God. 
Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being able to preach to these wonderful people. You have given me an opportunity in a lifetime. Listen, listen. There is no greater calling than to be a pastor. There is nothing in life that is more frustrating and rewarding at the same time than being a pastor. And I would not trade where I'm at right now with anybody or anything. As much as I like my boy, Holmes, for the Kansas City Chiefs, I like the way he plays, I still would not trade him the pressure nor the money that he makes. I like being a pastor. They do it for one hour a day or one hour a week in front of millions of people. I do it all week long, and I'm preaching to millions of people. All right, come on, Sister Sabrina, let's do this. I'm going to attempt to land this plane. Not yet, Brother Dave, hang tight. I'll pull back on the wheels when we're ready to land. Here we go. John 17, chapter, chapter, chapter 17. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son, that, they, that, that thy son also may glorify thee. Watch. Don't, it's not Trinity. Just hang tight. Just hang tight. As thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. I want to bless those that you have put into my life because that's what I'm here for. My job, Jesus' job, is to put into people. That's what he was sent here for. And this is life eternal that they might know thee. He's talking about the disciples. The only true God. Also, Jesus. Remember in the Greek, and is the same as also. And this is life eternal that they might know thee, the only true God, also Jesus Christ. Whom you have sent, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou givest me to do. And now, O oh Father, what is he doing? He is bringing the flesh under control and giving the glory back to God. Because now things are going to start changing. And now, O oh Father, glorify, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. There's one. I'm not preaching to one this message. I'm getting ready. We're getting ready. We're, we're, we're going. I have manifested thy name into the men which thou gavest me. I have put myself, the word, here we go. I have put me into the people that you have, that we have, that has been chosen. I know they don't have a Bible, but if they could just preach Jesus, things will come alive. Amen. It's in the Word. Check the Word. It's in the book. Check the book. Only you caught that, Sister Heather. I'm putting myself into the people. I am dumping the Word, the Word, into the people. What they do with it, with that, is up to them. I have 11 that stood strong. I have one. That fell by the wayside. Right. Right. Judas. But that was.
was never going to make it to heaven. But Judas had a choice to repent and make things right. Remorse and repentance is two different things. Remorse is saying that I feel sorry because I got caught where I was at. Repentance says, God, you know what? Deal with my sins. Get them out. Let's talk about this. Which God gave me out of the world. Thine, thine they were. They were yours, God, and you gave them to me. And they gavest me, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Watch this, watch this, watch this. They've kept the word. The word, they have kept me safe. They have been there for three and a half years for me. They left their mommies and daddies and brothers and sisters. They left their professions. They left their businesses. You gave them to me. I have poured my life into these three and a half, these people for three and a half years. Let's read on. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. They've had the revelation. I'm yours and you're me. We are one. Only revelation comes from God. So they've had a complete understanding. They had to have. Yes, Thomas doubted because he wasn't sure, but he still believed in the one God. He still believed in Jesus Christ. He still believed in the miracles that were created. He still believed in the lives that were changed. That's what they were there for. For I have given unto them the words which thou givest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I come out of thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I have poured out the word, me, into them. Now the word has to get down into our hearts and has to germinate. Is that the right word? Germinate, germinate, take, take root. And they, they've got to take root in the right way. And the right things have got to be spoken forth. They've got to grow. You say, you know what? Okay. Okay. If you've got to go in and chop the tree down, chop the tree down. There's good fruit on that tree, but there's a lot of bad fruit on that tree. Listen, it's easier. You're, you're going to know how to grow the good fruit. You'll regrow it. Get rid of the bad fruit, whatever it is. I've had to chop down a couple trees in my life. I can always regrow the good fruit. What you see is good fruit. What you don't see is the trees that I've chopped down of the bad fruit in my life. Here we go. I pray for them. Jesus is praying for them. I pray not for the world. I'm not praying for the world. I'm praying for them, which thou hast given me, for they are thine. He keeps having this. They're yours. They're mine. I, I, I fed them. I put them. I did what you called me to do. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. <laughs> the glorification comes out of you when you give God glory. And giving God glory is giving him glory and giving him thankfulness in the bad times. Because that's where God gets the glory. It's through your bad times. Anything can go good. I went to look for another blue truck yesterday. I've been on the internet for six months looking for a blue truck. Six months. Got it picked out. Got everything. You know what God told me? Nope, can't have it. When's it going to happen? Well, it, well, just don't worry about it. Right now, you figure out what... No. The word is no. Let's read on. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. 
And now I am no more in the world. But these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. <laughs> There has to be unity in the house of God. There has to be unity. I don't care if you don't like it. I do care. I do care. Because I have to answer the first lady. <laughs> but my point is, is that, is that we run the train. We are the engineers right now. We are what pushes the level forwards and backwards. God is using us for right now to move the train. Okay, okay, this this is just me. Can I just step out just for a moment? Okay, okay. <laughs> if you don't like it, just put on your big boy panties and get 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 her life. You know, you know what? I'm serious. No, okay, let's go on. <laughs> I, uh, where am I at? Seven. Uh, where am I at? Twelve. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou givest me, I have kept. And none of them is lost. But the son of perdition. That the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Okay. We have a couple more scriptures to read, but the Lord wants me to tell you something real quick right now. And I have to stop and tell it, because if I don't, I forget. He said, you are not of the world. You are only in the world. This is not your world. You have better things coming. And your level, your level of acknowledgement is by what you do here for the kingdom. If you don't want to do it here, you only get to be a gatekeeper up there. <sighs> People know you by your fruit. They know you by your works. They know you by your attitude. They know by you by where you go to church. Read on. Where am I at? 14? I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of this world, even as I am not of this world. The only thing, the Lord rebuke you in Jesus' name. The only way you're going to affect or infect the world is to get the word inside of you. You cannot play patty cake with Jesus and expect to be his. You got to be on fire with the Holy Ghost. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth as thou hast sent me into the world. Even so, have I also sent them into the world. For oh, Okay, 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 okay. The world hates you because of the Word. Because the Word is in you. You should have a different voice. You should have a different attitude. You're not serving the old man anymore. You're serving the new man. And the new man is Jesus Christ. Yes. 
sanctify through the truth, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Your word is the testimony of Jesus Christ. That they may ha that they may be one. Come on, Sister Sabrina, give me the next screen. We had a, must have had a computer freeze. I stayed there too long, didn't I? Oh, where are we at? Read for me, Brother Ron. Go to verse 24. Go to verse 24. We'll, we'll pull it up. All right, thank you. May be made perfect in one, that the word may not know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, your glory. If you are in him and he is in you, you should be holding the glory of the Lord. O oh, righteous Father, the word world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it. That the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Close it down, Sister Sabrina. This plane is landing now. Listen to me. Here's the moral of the story, if you will. Or here is the closing remark. And that is simply this. You are a king. You control things within your reach. You call it out. We're talking about the kingdom. If you are in him and he is in you, you are the one that has the right to declare what happens in your life. I don't want that there. This ain't going to happen. This situation is a bad situation. The only way you're going to bring down the glory of God and the presence of God is to let the word get inside of you like never before. Okay. I like a good old piece of chicken deep fried in grease, all covered in grease and just surrounding it. I know some of us don't, we can't, but I, I like that. I like that. I, I like a greasy old piece of chicken. I like that stuff. Listen, the analogy is this that you are the piece of chicken not in the grease but in the word surrounding you allowing God to put the good things in your heart do you know that do you know that I don't ever walk up here and think a cuss word I don't think a cuss word in my life when I'm walking day to day I, I just don't it's not in my vocabulary I don't cuss my wife out. I don't cuss my kids out. Because it's not in my vocabulary, because I have taken years of practice to learn that I'm not going to succumb to something that could control my life later on. And I don't have to worry about what words come out of my mouth. The only thing I have to worry about is, did I say the right thing and if I'm going to get in trouble at home tonight? But if you're in him and he's in you, Jesus, the Lord, the, in the beginning was the word. God sent the word to mankind. And he has, and, and, and Jesus Christ is pouring his word into you through the Holy Ghost. So you are born and birthed into the kingdom of God. The world is not.